7.30 on the road. Same time. <laughs> so we'll call this meeting of the CPDC to order. And the first order of business is a continuance for Meadowbrook Golf Club. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we have a request to continue to the next scheduled meeting, which is when? October 1st. It's actually just two weeks from now. Okay, so October 1st at 7.30? Yep. <clears throat> Move that the CPDC continue the public hearing for uh, site plan review of Meadowbrook Golf Club until Monday, October 30th. First. 30th. First. First. <laughs> <laughs> October 1st. You probably should say that again for the team. I'm sorry. So October 1st at 730. 7.30. 7.30, yeah. Second. All in favor? So the next continuance is for Johnson Woods. And they want to be on the when? Same. October Same 1st as well. Yeah. Okay. October 1st at what time? I would do 8.30. Okay. Move that the CPDC continue the hearing for the PUD special permit and or minor amendments for Johnson Woods until Monday, October 1st at um, 8.30. Second. All in favor? Great. Okay. So, what's next? The lot release or the a &R? Doesn't really matter. So the lot release, you can just read it and take a vote, and then the a you have to, just if you want to discuss it or understand it better, we can explain it, um, and then it's over there on the table for you to endorse. Okay, so the lot release, let's see, it says, um, lot, Lila states lot one release 364 Lowell Street. Um, on behalf of Jameson Properties LLC, ASB Design Group LLC, ASB, is requesting to be scheduled for the next possible CBDC meeting to request to request that the lot one 364 Lowell Street Route 129 be released so they can obtain a building permit and to begin remodeling the existing house. It is our understanding that we will be scheduled for a September 17th meeting at 7:30 p.m. Uh, let me know if any additional information from you prior to the meeting. So lot one is, it's part of the covenant because the covenant covers the whole subdivision, yeah. but it's the lot that has a house on it already. Right. So it's really no, we don't need to wait for utilities and infrastructure to be put in before we lose it. Um, and it's not part of the, the surety for that same reason. So. Okay. That's the only one they're requesting to be released at this time. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any issue with that? Nope. No. No. All in favor of releasing lot one, 364 Lowell Street. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so where's the ANR? Let's see. Family Circle. 18 um, Family Circle. Which actually directly abuts Meadowbrook, um, down on the very western end of Grove Street. And it's the A and R that's in front of you tonight. And it's partially up on the screen here. It's really just a land swap between um, two property owners, and I believe one of them is here tonight. Um, if you have any questions, a land swap that doesn't affect the frontage of either property. <coughs> um. It seems to be perfectly in order. I'm not sure I understand why <laughs> they want to do it, but that's... We can speculate, but we don't have to know why. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, it looks like they're gaining parcel 1A, which is closer to the residence, at the entrance, so it gives them more clearance, hmm. potential clearance, and whatever else they need to do. Fine by me. <laughs> yeah, it looks like both lots are still conforming. Swapping. It's a dog run. Yep. And it looks like everything is in order per the town chair. I wrote that. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote this? Why, um, 
Did they submit anything? I usually write them. And the town engineer doesn't respond? He doesn't. I don't know. In my planning experience, I've always been the one that's written them. And he looks he looks at the plan, but. Yeah, George, way back, George used to review them, right? To make yes. sure that everything yeah. that was on the plan was there. That's why I guess it's confusing to me okay. that you're writing. Not that you Well, he should. does get it and he does look at it. Okay. Yeah. We do it together and I write the memo. Uh, I, I don't like this format. I can change it for you. Well, two <laughs> CPDC and then it's a CC instead of from. But I keep saying it. We'll change it. Right. Any questions, issues? So on the map on the screen, what's being swapped for what? Um, <coughs> to say yeah. that. Sure. So it's it's these two pieces right here that are being swapped. So this piece that's right here for this rectangular piece here. So this rectangular piece is currently part of this lot. It goes okay. right here. And this like um, hatchet right here is part of this big box. So they're being swapped for each other. So the, the, the parcel that abuts the roundabout is now being associated with the house that it's near to. They both abut the, the cul-de-sac. No, I understand. But right. the, Any issues? <laughs> so it's the mylars are over there on the table. All right. Can I get a motion? To um, approve it. So do we want to approve the approval not required? <coughs> endorse. No, endorse. <laughs> <laughs> motion endorse. <laughs> endorse. Move that the CPDC endorse the uh, approval not required uh, land swap for. Um, 18. Family circle, 18 to 23 family circle. Second. All in favor? Opposed? I, I don't get to vote. Okay, just you have a full board. <laughs> <Check. laughs> All right, so I guess we can go back to start that. signing those. <coughs> and we can move on to something else, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's anyway, so if, if you just wait until they sign, we'll give you a copy. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Thank you. Can do our 40-hour guidelines? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, could you pull the public to see if they're here for anything in particular? Sure. Let's see. You want me to do a voice count? Hmm. No, nope, never mind. No, it left. All right, good. Meta Meadowbrook. Yeah. Johnson. Yeah, Meta. If you got here late, Meadowbrook and Johnson Woods were both continued, and so we're just discussing some zoning things. 40R zoning guidelines, meeting minutes. If you want to start going through those, you're more than welcome to start reading those. Okay. See if you can stay awake while you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go right into the 40 hour guidelines as opposed to the meeting minutes? Do you want to talk about something else first? Um, I think maybe do the minutes first, and then because I think John Barnes might try to come All right. for the discussion on 40 hour. Sure. Okay, so you just have that one side Yeah. I guess a very fancy pen. Yes. <laughs> and name large. <laughs> okay. It's is okay. there a spot? Is it printed? My name yeah. is printed somewhere. There's no somewhere. name's not mine, but there should be a there line. Are, lines. Um, are there enough lines for five? Yeah, there are. There are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Dude, it's really it's technically only three people have to sign it, but if you feel like trying out your John Hancock, <laughs> <laughs> warming up your <laughs> signing hand. Bear in mind, it's designed to last for 100 years. With, yes, I'm <laughs> conscious of that kind yeah, of thing. You'll see all the signatures just sign underneath them. Okay. And there's two um, mylars to sign them. Yes. Yeah. Should it say there was no one present on behalf of the applicant or on the application? Of the application. There was no one present on behalf of the application. That's mm. how I usually word it. Yeah. yeah. No one, none of the project proponents were, were there. Similar to tonight. Are you going to sign those? Sorry, I'm reading. Sorry. You know what? I don't think they were dated either. Can you date them under there? Do you think it needs to be dated? I think the date at the bottom. But underneath the signatures, there's a spot for a date. Maybe we can dismiss him.
So the minutes for um, August 13th, page 5, we have another DHDC instead of DHCD up in the second paragraph. CPDC approved the minutes for the meeting of uh, August 13th, 2018, as amended. Second. Second. All in favor? Stand. You don't have to, but. I can. So I will. <laughs> I just have your baby. You don't have to. I understand. <clears throat> So 40 hour design guidelines. How do you want to do this? How do you want to go through this? You want to look at our comments first? So since the last meeting, I think we only received comments from Tony. But Pam, you provided Mine. some prior to the prior. last meeting. Right. And then Nick provided some a few months ago before I went out. And then, so they're all kind of jumbled together in this master draft that we have. Um, nice. We tried to attribute comments that were made to the people that made them, um, but I guess that's neither here nor there, really. Um, what do you think we should do? Start at the beginning, or is there's more comments towards the end? I think so. Yeah. Right. And if we want to do it, how we've been doing with the public. We could. Uh, I just I want to understand maybe what Jonathan might have. Oh yes, I should add we did receive comments from John Barnes as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thank you. Um, thank you, by the way, for waiting for me to talk about it. Um, I had sent my comments, I think, to to Andrew uh, months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, the the Virginia and I, we have the historical commission have gone over our so. Those represent the comments from the historical commission. So you folks should have had them for a while. We're happy to go over them. Okay, so we have those. Are those in there? Yeah, yep. they're incorporated okay, in good. the document. All right, then let's just. Um, I'm JB on the right there. <laughs> <Yep>. Yeah, <laughs> those are actually him, and mine are actually mine. And then a lot of the other ones Andrew just inputted and tried to give credit where credit was due. And I actually, Pam, yours might be yep. separated out as well. Yep. Um, so we can kind of get down to the more. Do you want to start at the beginning and go through each one by one, or go to the added if, section? There's something of consequence up there, sure. If it's sort of you know, wordsmithing, it doesn't really change much other than make it flow better. We can skip over those. Yeah, the first 
one discussion on the main streets. Do we add Ash and Gold? Tony sent those comments over. Um, do we want to incorporate those as primary commercial streets, um, given the development along <coughs> them? But well, also given that these were written when the district was smaller, right. so the district's bigger, so we might want to add in commercial streets in the new section, the district. Can you see it? Is it big enough? <coughs> It's glary, but blow it up a little bit. Off those front yeah. turn, is there a way to turn those? Uh, yeah. Yeah, some master switch that turns that. It's plus the clock tower. Buttons. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> well, the Gold Street is half of half of it is re purely residential. Correct. The, and the development that we've got going on, the EMARC building, is basically converting it from uh, commercial, if you will, to uh, mixed use, but primarily residential. So I think it would be, uh, that would certainly not be a primary commercial street. Right. But, um, Except that, I mean, basically the, the end of it towards the railroad station is where the commercial development would be reasonable but that's i'm not sure if that's gold street or if that's basically the the uh, station side of uh, whatever that's street. Haven street. Hey, street. street street which part are you talking oh i see what you're saying, what you're saying. Where yeah, Haven and Gould, where Haven and Gould converge, right. right there, there, there are some commercial properties right, right. there, and then further down, even. Yeah. But that's it. That well, and then there's John Kane's structure, which is if you go from Gould Street, then you've got um, the the development on Gould, then you have Donna's house, then you have another house, and then you have uh, the, the cane oil is right immediately before those other three houses at the end of Gould Street. Well, the, the cane oil is, is being redeveloped as part of the E-Mark, I believe. Or is no, that, not no, not at all. It's, not. No, it's all separately. So I think the question really <coughs> is, is what does it, um, and maybe we can just put a pin in this, because what does it change in terms of designating a street as a primary commercial street or not? Right. I, I can't really have that question and answer that question until we go whether they should be until we go sort of mm. exactly what does that mean. Right. And it's also capitalized primary commercial streets, so you should find it if that's defined somewhere. How it's defined. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see what the implications are. I'm yeah. inclined not to include gold. Right. right. Okay. And gold is done. And that would have to be ash within a certain zone because ash on the other side of Main Street is almost all. Well, the zone is totally the zone is Washington Street, right? Right. So it's not much of ash, right. relatively speaking. Yeah. Right. So maybe neither street qualifies as primary or commercial. Right. No. Comment one. <laughs> Quick, scroll fast. <laughs> okay, and then you know, we talk about it again, adding ash and gold. Um, that was a comment from Tony again in this at the bottom of this paragraph. Um, yeah. So we, so and then strip. we have a comment from John Barnes. Um, he added in some language about respecting the existing single-family, two-family, and three-family residential uses without unduly encroaching upon them into that paragraph. I think Tony had some interesting comments and good comments on single and two-family residents versus three-family, where that gets more 
sort of business um, aspect of it, and that's also kind of explained further down below, but it's something to think about of how do we treat each residence, do we treat them uniquely or group them all together? Yeah, that, that seems that's to make sense to me that once you get into a three family, it could be a very different building, so. Right. Yeah. And it's a different use in the zoning bylaw, it's a right. different kind of animal. Mm -hmm. So, you can just continue to think about that. Reworking. Think about that yeah. one a little bit. I don't yeah. know if the language is exactly right. Yeah, right. It's not exactly zoning. Right. Respect is a tough word. You know, like, force. do you do you respect a owner-occupied house more than a rental property? You know, or is it about the neighborhood? Right. <coughs> Wait, what's that right before that? Yeah, can you scroll up? Yeah, like a little the beginning bit, so. of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I see where this is going, but I'm wondering if it's more about scale and uh, pattern language right. or something. I think they would know how to interpret this based on the guidelines themselves and the info we give back to them. And the character. What is that character? You know, what do you see as the essence of that character? Because not every house has any, not every house has architectural value. Uh, that sounds harsh, I'm sorry, it's somebody's home, but it's, you know, sometimes it's just somebody's house, and it's not that the, 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 the character of the architecture is really valuable, right? That another yeah, residence, not. another Why? residence could be just as valuable, that another type of structure could be just as valuable if it were providing the neighborhood with the same um, essence, I guess. I agree. I mean, from, from my perspective, but from my perspective, um, and to be honest, I was thinking more in terms of um, the, the character of that historical, for lack of a better term, the, the character of that residential neighborhood, which I know we've gotten into conversations about whether it is or it isn't a residential neighborhood, but I was more focusing on I mean, my, one of my primary objectives, and I don't know whether it maybe feels the same way, but I mean, it was, it, it almost always is to, <coughs> to preserve the character and identity of different aspects of the town of Reading. In this particular case, it's the character and identity of, of, its, of its historic uh, downtown um, neighborhoods. So I was more focusing on the, the greater concept of the residential neighborhood rather than a particular individual house. I, I, I wanted to insert something here, um, or I, I want you to insert something here, um, as I did also in the earlier section about the, um, the general uh, goals, I mean, basically the two reasons which I know we've talked about before. One is I think it's very important for developers to know what what it is that this town is looking for these these um, projects to to look like, so they know what to try to, to try to um, work towards to develop. But also, I was looking also also for something some language in the design guidelines as as well as in the in the bylaw to afford the CPDC the opportunity to hang its hat on. Um, negotiating with a particular developer to meet a particular standard and in the worst case scenario to reject the development, uh, to reject the project because it doesn't conform with specific stated goals uh, or specific stated language in the design guidelines. And in here, I thought, I thought it was really important. I know the section is to talk about reinforced broader town goals and the downtown, but I did not want to lose sight of the fact that 
that the other the other aspect of that is and to preserve the the, the character of the residential um, the residences that are in the residential neighborhood that is also in that same area and has existed in that same area. I wanted the developer to understand that that's a that's an yeah. Area. I would like to phrase uh, residential neighborhood like neighborhood character of the neighborhood so if you could just just type in those words there so we can somewhere go between that and what's mm -hmm. written right there because mm -hmm. that's what it's about right mm -hmm. there are some some of those homes are sure some of those homes um, have value in that pattern that struck the structure if you think about the last few houses on the left, left side of ash i guess is that what it is well, you know, like that, that little cottage sort of A-frame kind of thing, marching yep. down the platform. Right, on, gold, the, on, on green. On green, 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 right? Yeah. You know, like, whatever, whatever happens there in the future should look like that. You know, it doesn't have to be individual houses, but whatever, and way down in the future, obviously. But, you know, that character should be retained, because that's been there for a while, and... It doesn't necessarily mean that you see mean that style, right? That typology. Yeah, it's right. not going to be a, you know, asphalt shingled, you know, siding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Never catch on fire, Virginia. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to bring up the fact that vernacular architecture is still very important for the community because it usually represents the fact that the um, community was developing and the housing was built for workers, and so everyone always thinks of uh, good architecture as being something striking and. Uh, very well designed, but there is a certain place for vernacular, uh, and I just bring that up as a... No, that's a good phrase, actually, and we think we've used that in yeah. the past, but... Yeah. Well, but we are also might help uh, clarify things if we, if we include <coughs> uh, existing, identify it as existing residential uh, uses or, or properties, as you, as you say. <clears throat> because the we don't want the uh, cookie cutter suburban house with vinyl siding next door to something that was built in 1905 with the the, the uh, appropriate character. I mean, so it's find a way of, of not this not necessarily characterize it as a neighborhood, but characterize it as uh, harmonious with existing. Um, or in abutting properties or uses. I think that word harmonious. Did you have something? Neighborhood. Okay. I, 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 just, I just do think that we should be careful. I recall some of the back and forth around Gould Street with similar phrasing in the application that got very um, sticky in terms of everybody had a different interpretation and they right. got very kind of and it was hard to interpret it was a phrase that could be interpreted a lot of different ways and it felt um, uh, folks felt very attached to their definition of it and because it was vague um, a movement from that definition was challenging and so I just want us to be careful in a phrase like this where we use maintain the character and preserve the integrity those feel strong in a situation where this is a guiding principle and we do actually want to keep it vague in some ways because right. it's a guiding principle as opposed to a rule that's why I like harmonious that we right. felt a little bit more in line with this is the direction we're pushing you, but we're not going to circums, you know, uh, not going to close any doors preemptively. Right. Okay. Keep scrolling. I'm going to get through a lot of these if we can. Mm -hmm. Not get hung up on anyone. All right. Stuff. He 
start talk, talking about facade setbacks um, under section 7.1. I think these are my old comments, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, We've discussed. Did you guys talk about these? We, yeah, we yeah. have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle develop Michelle Station development has this sort of um, undulating facade, so they're not covering the whole. Um, they're not set back everywhere, and it provides enough break. And I think the original Gould Street was doing some of that as well, mm -hmm. except above the first floor. Yep. Right. So just giving them a little more flexibility in what they want to come up with. All right. And then the ability to waive that. If somebody comes up with a great design that's going to open up some big public space on that frontage, you know, I think <coughs> you should entertain that. Richard. Right. I almost agree with Tony that I don't know if we have to state that this can be waived. I think we do. Yeah. Absolutely. We need to say which things you guys have the power to waive. I thought technically the board had the power to waive any of the sometimes, guidelines. Sometimes having it stated is... I, I really like it here because this is where everything happens, mm -hmm. right? That first right. floor on the street is is where this project is going to succeed. You know, you can put apartments anywhere. People will live in them. You can turn <laughs> over a one-bedroom, two-bedroom apartment like that. But what happens on that first floor? You know, is that business going to be successful down there? Uh, is it going to be something that's engaging as opposed to just another? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> just another, <laughs> another <okay>. service <laughs> use <laughs> with, with opaque enjoy. windows. <laughs> <laughs> kind of reviewed these setbacks yeah. as well a bit. Yeah, and a few little, a few more diagrams, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is that comment there, JM23? Should be changed unless the regulation is meant only for district boundaries, because technically there is no residential district, so again, that could be changed to neighborhood. Um, Did you add stuff you? to this since I printed it like an hour ago? Well, it's two things, because some of them do abut right. residential districts, but there's also the issue when you're when the development's abutting a residential oh, property. Did, yes, yes. So... <clears throat> Do you, yeah, just uh, uh, thinking this through a little bit, Clay, um, hear me out. Um, if we in here start to define things as existing residential uses that are maybe non-compliant, uh, non-conforming, -conform I'm sorry, um, um, and uh, I, I and a developer doesn't want to abut a existing residential use, wouldn't it make sense that they then buy that existing residential use and flip it from a residential use to a commercial use and then they are then they aren't abutting that when in the in, in the end we really want that use to be a residential use even if it abuts a new commercial building because that couple of hundred thousand dollars to buy that residential use <coughs> may be a lot cheaper if they can get the increased development potential on their new building D D Okay. If the chips fall, well, like if I the just property is for sale and they can do that, but it'd have to be a loan residential. Room. But I see. I think I'm, I see. What I'm you're just. Saying. I bring that up because yeah. um, I am. I'm. I want us to be cautious about um, about designing things um, according to the 
the, system. What's the there abutting, now? Yeah, the, the use of the abutting property, right. not the district, because that's that we need to go to town meeting to change that district line. But when we allow things to be designed according to what happens to be there today or yesterday, right. um, and that can change at a moment's notice um, with you know with enough influence. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think we want to be cautious about the unintended consequences of of that because we certainly don't want to. Um, We've had the opposite happen, right? Where they bought a commercial property and incorporated it into their residential development. The, the Lincoln Street mm -hmm. property, mm -hmm. bought the gas, the service station, mm -hmm. and converted it. And it could flip either way. So, do you? What are you? Do you have a specific suggestion for how to to deal with that, or well, like, should we rather than specifying if it abuts a residential yeah, use, it, just specify setbacks? I, I don't know. I, every time we go through this, that's the thing that just I get stuck on. I, I get what we want to do, but I just have a, 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 a reaction. Um, Re remember, to John, that. that this is business B. Yep. So you can go in there, and if you own the property, put up a business B structure. Yeah. Anywhere. Yes. And so it can be both. It can. It, it can be both. If just as the the Woolworth property has a business and has a residence in the same building. So it's and, the, and originally, if you go back to the 1880s, and mm. Virginia can back me up on this, most of the houses in... <laughs> but you've done research. Uh, uh, many of the houses that are currently on uh, Ash Street had both. Yeah. They had the man right. who, who did the tack and, and buckles for harnesses for horses, and then he lived on the second and third floors. So you have all of those as conditions. They're all possible. Yeah, yeah different characters. That was before zoning. Yeah. That was before zoning, <laughs> yes. But, right. so, but, but that's zoning, the character of the area. The prescience of mixed use, and now that's where uh, we're trying yeah. to get back to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, but, so good design, if, we, if a building, a development comes in and there's a, a budding, some residence uses in the district, and we make them address that use somehow, right, by just not putting up a sheer wall, for example, you know, uh, there's step backs and there's, it addresses the property line and the, the building facade is doing something attractive. The, the residence goes away, the next building has something attractive next to it and it could address it as well. And so we get some variety mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, party walls between uses with little alleys that get murals painted on them. You know, we get something happening where the buildings maybe even have, um, you know, levels that address those those uses that are going on. And so you have to break up that block a little bit. So I think that you're right. We should be careful that we tell them it has to be um, a setback and no windows and, and do this and do that as opposed to something, you know, more engaging so that the next piece can address anything that happens to it. Yeah, we also need to keep in mind that the uh, the guidelines need to be appropriate for redevelopment of first wave mixed use structures. Somebody comes in and they want to uh, redevelop uh, 30 Haven. I mean, it, it's uh, at some point. The things that which are being built according to the, the first generation 40R are going, they're going to be some second generation 40R. So we have to just be cognizant of the continuing things. Would you have us just have more general language that can be? Um, regarding setbacks to abutting properties, not based on what the abutting properties are used as, or like, what would be your suggestion for how we? 
what if the language was something like shall address the abutting property or the, the property edges including and then you know you have the residential piece right. there so it's either or yeah and, and it's also I mean we will, we probably want the setbacks and guidelines to apply uh, even if it's a mixed use adjacent to a mixed use which has the uh, residential compound you know above the first floor if you will I mean the the idea of having like different setbacks and stepbacks and treatments depending on what the abutting uses are is kind of but that's in fact what you do have I'm, I'm saying I'm saying right now that it's it is kind of strange because those things can always change yeah they could but again it's still <coughs> it adds it adds to the building's character. It the makes more sense maybe right. on the district edges where they abut different zoning districts than it does within the district. So district edges versus abutting properties, abutting residential. Like within. Yeah, I'm trying to like, I'm, I'm picturing that the new building that just went in and the in stone on in a tiny little sliver of a space that matched everything next to it almost perfectly. So it looks like it's always been there. And that was the key, is that it it's the same height, it's the mm -hmm. same, you know, uh, setback from yeah. the from the street. <coughs> and so a variety I think would not be what we want in well, that I situation. Know, I, I, I think that the three buildings they put up in there are too oppressive because they never set back the top story and so they have not. Understood. They there. killed the sun in that situation, but our, it it looks like it's always been there. It's a nice building. It's just that the scale of it is impressive because it doesn't have any of that step back that we wanted. And the top one. The, and the building the next ones. to it has a mansard roof, right, which automatically starts to sort of... The one on the, on the, the corner. The corner. Yeah. For some reason, they're just going... They're just letting them go four or five stories straight without doing anything. Okay. Opportunity. I think there's, right. there's going to be... There's got to be a balance. We can't <coughs> over... Right, yeah. Go right mm -hmm. to the variety of restricted one right. or the other. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that it's by variety we mean within the project. I just was picturing that when you were saying, you know, right. the, the ones next to each other, that that was something that did kind of come in with two mixed use buildings on either side of it. And so if you had to put the little tiny house in the middle of that, it would have. <laughs> Do you remember what was there? Or was that before it was uh, it was like a one story retail it's a dental yeah a dental place with the yeah it was very metal looking clinker clinker bricks and yeah it's like a little cape just stuck in there yeah just a little, just cape. little tiny guy hmm. okay anything significant here. So we talk about it. Um, again, buildings that abut residential districts or uses mm -hmm. shall be subject to smaller proportions appropriate to the scale of the neighborhood. Um, so there again, we're getting into that same question. I would Treating say it differently because the of what abuts. Yeah. But if the topmost story. You know, if you let a four-story building go in that has, that's carved out around it as you go, mm -hmm. you know, it steps up or whatever, I don't know that that's a bad thing all the time. And we can sit here and try to figure out which sites do that and which sites don't do that, but there, there will be sites that don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. We talk about that transparency in here, and it just seems like every time we get a new project, they just completely go away from that. Which transparency? Transparency at the storefront. Oh, you know, the 60 percent glass. I was looking at that picture, yeah. saying that would be so nice and lovely. <laughs> Activity uses that. Yes. 
<clears throat> Makes connect maximizes connection to the street level. You know, we'll have to think about that because we just keep getting more and more uh, service uh, applicants. But but I do think I mean. Uh, I think that's a, a function of the stage we are in yes. the in the development yes. in the density right now. Yes, because um, there's not enough street traffic to care about having. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll make be that valuable, you know. But I, I think that may change. Well, when we start to fill up, right, the, right. Uh, e Mart and the uh, uh, Reading Village and the post office, post office, post office and the uh, the one on Main Street. I mean, the population is going to of the the district is going to increase. That's one of the things that we're aiming for. And so, although those uses right now might want <laughs> to cover all those up, at least they're there. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it would hurt, though. To, if this is our goal, I mean, I don't know if you you bring that back up to the guiding principles, but you know, mm -hmm. street level activity and connection right. between the the uses and the street is you know a goal that we want. Yeah, and the dentist that came in last, remember, she, her initial plan was blocking up those windows, and we worked with her to make her figure out how to podiatrist, make it. Podiatrist, right? The podiatrist, yeah. is that what yeah. that is? I was going to say chiropractor. Yeah, the dentist was first. <laughs> 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 working the <laughs> working <laughs> down. Something. <laughs> Built from the top. Medical to the use. Bottom. Medical use. Well, it's great. It's a medical district. Mm. <laughs> Maybe that's our niche. Yeah, you know, they, we get one of the little leggies. <laughs> no, that's what we're going to walk through. We already have it. The green triangle right. is going to be a big health care. Green triangle. Walgreens could be a big health care. Kate is moving a thousand jobs in Boston. It could, be. it could be. I mean, the parking in front of the one stop is terrible. So. All right, so there's a bunch of this um, two, three family residential. Right, I don't think material. Language we have to, we need to, uh, two, five, we need to craft a little bit. Okay, so we won't, we'll skip through materials and then moving on to um, site design standards. Where we are? Okay. There's some stuff about parking. Primary commercial street, uncapitalized. Um, that's inconsistent. <laughs> Highlight that so we can Where is it? follow through on that. Right there, right? Two, two. Yeah. Which lawyer wrote that sentence? <laughs> Which <laughs> sentence? <laughs> the one I wrote. Mitigation <laughs> made for adverse. Is it yours? Is that A22? That would be yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. Jonathan one. <laughs> I was trying to, you know, I was trying to figure out how to reconcile. Sometimes the parking does need to be in the back, but it isn't lost on me over on uh, Prescott Street um, for those uh, residences behind. Uh, that building where the parking is going to be below. So, um, I, I, I mean, change the language however you want, but just incorporate the concept that you need to be sensitive if it's going to be on the street, and not below the street, to consider the, uh, the uh, residences. Yeah. So what's missing for me in this, and I, I'm thinking about the Sunoco, and I don't know where, if this is the right place for it, but the parking guidelines seem to only be in place for the residential units. So mm -hmm. the ratios have to do with the residential units. But if you're putting in a commercial or a retail establishment, you've got to have some consideration for you know, either the loading zone or the workers, if we can think about our Perfectos example, or you know, simply the, the pick up and drop off traffic. So I don't know if this is an opportunity to encourage that to be considered a, 
as particularly in part of the mixed uses, you know, if they've got the requirement based on the housing units and there's nothing that's in there based on the, um, the additional uses, then that's where the push gets on the parking in a lot of ways. It's less about the residents um, because, because that's already kind of built into the zoning and it's more about, you know, the, the, the better that Bunratties and Biltmore do, the less parking there is from 6 to 10 p.m., which is great, but also, you know, only one of them has the actual built-in parking with it. I don't know. I don't know. This is an opportunity to encourage. We do need to figure out something about employee parking. I think. Yeah, the, I was thinking. It's that not factored we... in anywhere. Anywhere. It, it certainly wasn't for for uh, Biltmore and Main because they're parking anywhere. The, the Our recent staff parks everywhere they can. Our recent parking study by Nelson Nygaard actually revealed that our on-street parking is very underutilized. So it might just be more of a management and um, enforcement signage. It's you know, it just open more spaces for employee parking. <coughs> um, give out more tags. So we have a limited number of employee parking tags as well. No. Yes. Vanessa, I'll run up slide for Um I've actually spoken with some of the businesses, and the employee parking is a huge factor for them. Um, most of the area that we're talking about has two hour parking, and so a lot of employees get hit a lot with parking tickets um, and the shortage of um, employee badges contributes to that. Um, so I know it has an adverse effect on businesses. Something to consider. One time we had somebody come in and talk about one of the businesses that was going in that she worked at, and she lived like two blocks away. She still, needed employee parking. Still insisted on driving, you know, <laughs> to that. Oh business. no! And so we know how people are. They want to park in front of the door of the business or that they're either working at or going to. We might have to make some accommodations you know you can't park exactly where you work but there's parking downtown somewhere yeah. I don't know what the answer is I just know that well I, I've so never had a problem finding parking when I go downtown to use it and I understand though that someone who's working there all day has to, has to deal with it so yeah I, I was gonna say wasn't there uh, back to your numbers game I thought that there were oh never mind that's parking space dimensions there's parking space dimensions are mentioned elsewhere but they're not accounted for in all the conditions, right? They only apply to certain things as we got caught up in. Well, we've got we have the three the 300 feet of the public parking lot, uh, basically allowance or exemption in terms of the zoning uh, requirement the, for the commercial spaces. I don't think, because I don't think you can go to the police station and buy an employee parking permit necessarily I mean you the residential permit but um, for the spaces along you know the, which are identified resident parking but I'd, there might be a, um, a gap in our parking management specifically for the employee parking basically non-resident employee my understanding is you can lease specific spaces in town as employee parking. I want to say the spaces behind the old Walgreens, which could be too deep, can actually be leased. Mm -hmm. And therefore the business could have it and that's their parking spaces. So from my take, there's a couple of different things, and they all have different uses, and they all have different needs in terms of parking, right? There's employee parking, which tends to be, right, all day, or in Perfecto's <coughs> case, you know, yeah, yeah, um, and, um, and how you deal with that is different than how you deal with, like, all the overflow from, um, from a thriving, um, a thriving, a thriving business, but I guess 
what what's what's what I think we need to be cognizant of, and I and I'm not sure we can address it here in this in in this these guidelines, but it has to be addressed <laughs> somewhere in here, is that this idea that the 300 um, foot parking radius of a public of the I don't even forget what the public parking lot park, public parking lot, which doesn't include what's out here, nope. um, uh, uh, was great when um, uh, you know 20 years ago, um, mm -hmm. when the development was a little bit less, and the town downtown may not have well, it's still somewhat vibrant, but I think we want it more vibrant than it was, you know, right. certainly 15 years ago, um, and is that is that enough um you know bill more maine pulls in a whole lot more people than that chinese restaurant that used to be in the same space right it needs a lot more parking and and venetian moon needs a lot more parking than the the little Why? breakfast restaurant that used to be there you know so all of that stuff i mean i think that's really the thing that we are um not taking account of is um, is we are getting vibrant Success. businesses in here, successful businesses, yeah. and we don't, we are ignoring that part of it. And, um, and the, the difficulty here, I think, is we can't, we know that they can't be accommodated on site, right. nor should they. I mean, it's an right. environment where you don't want everyone yeah. right driving into the, right. the third floor of the basement garage and going up to the Venetian moon and then coming back down. I mean, even if they could, right? right? right. You going back down to their car and driving away. That's not at all what we want, right. even if someone wanted to do it. So I, I think there's something that we need to be able to think about of how we accommodate those parking, all that parking off-site and and whether we can make that some sort of requirement in terms of the design guidelines because I, I think that's really the only way to well, don't to make it work don't we have a, a active downtown parking examination slash task force or something going on right now not a task force we, we we're working with Nelson Nygaard actually they completed a recent like update of our downtown parking utilization um, and they'll be giving a presentation of it um, at our October 17th um, economic development workshop that I sent an email out about today right. yeah. um, and then we have the ongoing um, parking traffic transportation task force which is like a group of staff departments and we talk about safety issues and ongoing street closures and road projects and sidewalks and okay. things like that we don't like necessarily go out and monitor parking um, well I was thinking that, that the um, because the employee parking issue has, has come up very recently in more than one place uh, and maybe we could you know put a bug in the ear of the yeah we do talk about the employee parking problem um, at the PTTTF meetings a lot and right. there, there's been some ideas batted around for how to handle it and then this recent study that we just had done I think has recommendations that will be vetted that will sort of help us manage our downtown parking better. Um, yeah, the, I mean, maybe what we need to do in this, the design guidelines, is just include some heads up saying that commercial uses need to uh, pay attention to the employee parking requirements. No, we're going to need more than that. I think. Yeah. I think, but if it, anything well, more than like a do this or this as your choices in these design guidelines or a recommendation or a heads up really should be in zoning, right? Okay. I think like things in guidelines can be like if you're going to do a mixed use project and you want to have a portion that's commercial, you need to either consider giving parking or providing open space or like a variety of things they can like think about designing into their project. Um, if, we, if we're going to say if you provide um, commercial space, you need to have this many parking spaces, that really needs to be in zoning. That's my. Mm. I think that also yep. depends on what kind of business you have. 
if you've got a dentist office and you have three dentists and two hygienists, that's that number. Right, and that's section that nine require. of the zoning bylaw, which talks right. about different uses and different requirements and for, for different types of businesses. And then with a 40R, and, and let's just take the Gold Street as an example, you have an on-site business manager. If he's not living in the complex, he needs to park his car. And if you have a business, and let's say it's a coffee shop, don't even know, then you have to, mm -hmm. right? Then you have to provide for whoever's going to be serving the coffee and the person who's going to handle the washing the dishes and so on. Give them an MTA pass. <laughs> when, when my office moved to Boston, uh, it was, listen, if you want to rent a space, it's $500 a month. And everybody jumped on the train. So, you know, tough sometimes. <laughs> I mean, but we're Walk. not quite. <coughs> it's a nation where it's so overweight, it's not even funny. Walk, <laughs> stupid office. Well, but, um, but, but you don't want people again, parking illegally. No, I understand and, that. And that's but part of what war blocking. You know what? If you give somebody ways. 10 spaces, they'll, they'll bring 12 employees on, and two of them will have to start shuffling their cars around illegally. So no matter what we do, we're not going to completely solve it. Some will no. always think that they need more, and they're unwilling to find alternative methods to deal with their problem. They think it's the old problem. I need to bring my car to my work. But As the problem is you've got residential, which has X number of spaces. Let's say they've got 70 units, 70 spaces, of which even if eight or nine of those drive to work every day, that's eight or nine that's available in theory for employees. The goal would be to get the businesses to allow for sharing of those spaces. Make sure they're not reserved per unit. Make sure that they're up, open so that the, at least the employees, doesn't have to be the public, but at least the employees have a way, a place to park. So as part of design gu guidelines, going back to design guidelines instead of zoning, is what we don't see, we haven't asked for, um, I think as much as we should, is, specific plans on how they're going to address employee parking on site or off site if need be and um, and um, commercial you know the needs of parking needs of the commercial spaces um, uh, that maybe you know that uh, I don't know how we phrase it but um, you know, um, um, understanding the limitations of parking in the um, immediate area. I mean, right? That's what that's what I would want to see with the next development that comes in. Is okay, you know, your your restaurant that's going to drive in, you know, that's going to bring in, you know, five cars an hour. Mm -hmm. Where are they going? show me where they're going go back and do a parking studies count and oh yeah these six spaces are always open they're going to go right there all right. or they're going to have a right. park as soon as they say that in public the well, those spaces I, you, are no you, longer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i'm saying i mean they really need to give some thought <laughs> and some plan on how both employee and the commercial space because until now purposefully we've given them a free ride at least on the commercial side That's right. um mm -hmm. right and that has been a town-wide decision, or, or town, I shouldn't put it that way. That was a decision for a long time to use the town resources for commercial parking. And I'm not, personally not convinced that um, that hasn't been tapped out. What if we did something like bump the ratio up? From 1.25 to 1.5. Mm. It's the same argument. I mean, it's, so a, yeah, zoning, it's a zoning mm -hmm. bylaw change, but... but that's well, the wrong. That to me, the that's the wrong. Decision. That's the wrong that piece. If you build it, that's they building will use it. it. We don't need to focus on the residential part. No, it's not. It's it wouldn't. It would be for the project. So it's based on the number of units, but those spaces are for the whole project. So there'd be. I'm not talking about focusing on the residential part yeah. piece of it. I'm saying they'd have more parking on the site. I mean, down. I would but, do a per square foot buy of commercial space. Yeah. I would. Plus I would do it that way. Yeah. A ratio. Because, you know, right. The last one played games, right? You play the same start effect, to play games except, with that. That's the same effect. We get more parking potentially, or at least either on, on site, site. Or, or associated with the project yeah. if it's off site. Right. 
So write down that we, we need to enhance the, um, the traffic and parking studies, if you will, but it's as part of the project, they'll have to come in with some more robust but that's right. Right. Yeah. that's zoning. This is guidelines, right? No, well, but the guidelines no, are telling. I'm not telling no, I mean the what the adding adding ratio right. for yes. commercial. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. would be zoning. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah the number but goes I think there, this, but. like, I, you know, be prepared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what's your plan? Yeah. yeah what's your plan? <laughs> and then we scare off all. But I, you know, again, I think about the Sunoco when, you know, they're far enough out of the other loop that without at least one parking spot in the front, they're almost destining the, the retail to, to fail without having any ability to access it on a quick way, you know. Can we put three spots in? Did I? Three or four? Two. Two. Two is what they ended up with? They yeah. couldn't because of the curbs and everything on the crosswalks. <coughs> But that's for which purpose? For the business that is there, that is the walk-in yeah. business? But what about the person who's behind the counter? Of right, and that wasn't addressed, but right. none of it was addressed. Yeah. And none of it was part of the, the zoning. And so we're saying, you know, we're going, it's almost signaling, we're gonna ask you about this, here it comes. You know, so be prepared. So pre-zoning changes at this point in time, you're going to propose a, a robust restaurant. We need to know where those patrons are going to go. Good. Because we want that it to succeed as much as they do. Yeah, but I mean, Julie is right in the sense that the if it's a, if we're going to require the parking analysis and the plan, that's something that we have to do in zoning. I think that as basically part of the the district rather than the necess just the guidelines. Putting uh, notes in the guidelines is good, but if we want to get more uh, emphatic. Teeth. Well, I, I, I would be surprised, and I don't know, you have to go back and look, and maybe someone has it out, but I'd be surprised if we, that's not a requirement already, but how, um, in terms of, um, in terms of providing a, um, a parking study, but it's probably as short as that, two words. Yeah, we get a traffic study. We don't necessarily get like a parking Park. study. That's why it's not get a yeah, parking that's why plan. I think you can expand that. Yeah, line. yeah expand that. Mm -hmm. And I think we can do that as part of the design guidelines because that's part of the design of the site. We can also add it to the application without having to go to town meeting. We can add, you know, the, the application list of things they need to provide. Right. Good. That can be added. So I'm looking at this mm -hmm. comment here about utilities, and it pretty much says that you can't put this stuff anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so all of this will be located remotely. <laughs> I'm like a mobile truck that comes wow. out. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent idea. Go wireless. <laughs> So here, it, there's absolutely value in, say, not throwing that dumpster up against the neighbor's house, right? Right. But it might be the lesser of two evils. Where does it go, and how is it mitigated? You know, we don't want it visible from the primary commercial street. Um, if the only alternative then is to, say, put it in the back, and it's, it's five feet away from somebody's house, yeah. it's probably better to have it up front and somehow address it so that it, it's not just an open dumpster, I guess. It's that same language that you didn't like that that lawyer wrote on the uh, party. <laughs> well, no, this this is technical. You can't put it anywhere. If you can't put it on the front, you may get flex <coughs> right. for the right. sides. But I'm not saying, I'm saying you can say consideration and sensitivity should be given and mitigation made for adverse visual impacts upon neighboring single family. Yeah, I just want to somehow make it understood that there's a, there might be a priority to where it goes. And, and yeah. Guess that's 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 that'll be another. Well, the, problem, the, the obvious problem, <laughs> you're right, the yeah. obvious problem was, I mean, before, getting it off the main street was fine, but, you know, in situations where, I mean, the whole concept, I mean, all of what you're talking about is really important, but the, the whole concept of revisiting these design guidelines originally was to address the potential adverse impact to the residential neighborhoods. So, you know, all that stuff is important that you all have to consider, but 
you know, the concept is that you can't just dump the, these things that you're dumping off of the main street because you don't want them on the main street onto the back streets when there are residential neighborhoods mm -hmm. there. I mean, how, how you deal with this is a great point. I don't know the answer. <clears throat> Interestingly, hmm. signage. I think we actually do pretty well with signage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just have my own my my pet peeve of uh, awnings. Um, awning changed to provide signage. It's nine point four. like to insert something about, you know, matching uh, neighboring. Harmonious with. Yeah, we just don't think that an awning, a solo awning on a set of buildings without them is the right approach either. I think, I mean, as much as I don't think the set next to me on Main Street works. At least all of them have it next to, uh, next to each other. I don't know. If it were me, I would write no awnings. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is people use the wrong awnings. It could cover the whole activity of the street. So I guess the guiding principle yeah. is an awning um, that no, prohibits activity and interaction with the street. The side of Main Street gets hit pretty good with some sun, and I think that they're trying to help with that a little bit. Right, but then you have no idea that there's a coffee shop over there because you cannot see people in That's the That's the wrong awning. Correct. I designed that building and they put the wrong awning. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Which... Uh, fusion. Is it fusion there? Yeah, yeah, it was somebody else before the road. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they yeah. were supposed to be. I just and then the other side has the trees blocking the signs. Yeah. So you just can't win. Yeah. And you have to get out and walk. <laughs> see the signs. <laughs> but even then, I've, the, I don't know what's called now, but the Italian restaurant. Zuka. Did not know it was an Italian restaurant until people came out of it, and I was like, "Hey, that's a restaurant." Well, <laughs> that, that suffers from those windows. window coverings that he's had forever. Yeah, I think they just recently might have removed them. Yeah, it's slightly better now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so write down. Um, put the word harmonious in there so we can figure out <laughs> what he. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're trying to get. I just need to we yeah. need to craft that language. And speaking of the economic development, I mean, there is going to be a whole signage. I know it's it's wayfinding signage, mm -hmm. but if there is another, you know, grant that comes from the gods, I think some type of <laughs> signages to make everybody match across, yeah, uniformity, that would be really nice. Um, well, in type, though, right? Not necessarily in match exactly, right? Are you saying something like a... Um, Winchester. I can't tuck it standards. No, you're talking no. about <laughs> matching with In Winchester, the most of them, they have, they have the square that the words go into. Oh, on the businesses. Yeah. <clears throat> Harmonious. I mean, we do need to look at our sign by law. Um, <laughs> Just so not going to be a fun time. <laughs> keep going. Uh, yeah, let's keep. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So then we get to this section, which is the last thing I did before I had my baby. <laughs> Back in May. And it's been edited and tweaked a lot by lots of good comments, so I'm happy about that. I mean, this, this section is the reason we're doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this 10.4.3 Jonathan's language here might work at some of the other places where we were trying to work on harmonious. Sufficiently compatible. Sufficiently compatible with size, scale, mass, and architectural features of existing. You think that's the right phrasing for some of those earlier places? Complement, protect. Prior to this, as a request, it seems to reduce the what constitutes a neighborhood from about three buildings to two buildings. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Where are you? Really, In uh, the definitions, I think, right? Just above yeah, it. Above where this. I define right. the three things. Yeah. Um, we have residential neighborhood as a group of two or more. Where yeah, I don't, I don't know. know if that depends on which two. I mean, it could be two important <laughs> residences, but. Well, I, I guess historically, what might be how what I think would really be helpful. Actually, I mean, the district is not that big. Um, we should be able to tell exactly how what buildings are two or three um, adjacent single family, two family, and three family residential properties within the district. I, I mean, did that on the road, yes, but I don't remember. I was looking at a map. Um, Remember how we did and, that? I mean, and then what those that. adjacent right. properties are, and then how many are left. And that's a, yeah. that's a bit of my concern: is right. have we just have we have we just rewritten the whole um, district by including that? And we probably rewrote at least half of it. Right. I see. Yeah. I had done like an exercise where I'd actually looked at like what. Right, I think we have the black. What that black would map mean. I thought if we started specifying areas, that that would go into zoning with a right. district yes. as opposed to yes. design guidelines. Right, but what what I think what I'd really like to understand is with this definition or with these definitions, what. Do you want to see the impact? What's the impact? Like where are the neighbors? Where are if those? If they're two or if they're three. Yeah. yeah. Like what right. do we have? What do we have? Right. What are we talking about? Yeah. yeah. Because, because the truth is, yeah, you could, put, you could, you would, you could be able to mark those all down on a map. Yeah. We're, right. We're not going to, but. We did all, we did it when right. we wrote these, so we can pull that out. Um, I had totally forgotten about all right. that, but yeah. Because that that'd be helpful to understand right. what mm -hmm. you know where we're talking about. So about the height, Tony had a comment. Uh, building height creates elevation, where this kind of penalize people that live on a hill or at a higher elevation. So if we want to incorporate that or not. not even certain what absolute elevation would mean. I mean, if you say it can be 100 feet high and they're at the top of a 100 foot hill. Then zip nothing. They got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Parking lot. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a weird one. I'm not sure it's going to work that way. Which, right. one, which number is it? Height 1041. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Building heights, difficult enough it, as it is with zoning and building code. And we set our maximum height in the district based on what we felt was you know, the best building in the district. That's 45 feet. I think we, we had talked about absolute elevation because of that area, I think, on Ash Street where it like gets significantly higher, um, if I remember correctly. We could just have something there that says that the, the overall height of the development shall be subject to something, you know, based on the adjacent neighborhood. <laughs> We're just like having some big guidelines. Uh, I'm <laughs> to, I mean, propose something and we'll tell you if we like it. I can't come up with the words right now, but I'm just thinking that um, if, 
you go yeah. off Gold Street, right, right after the bank, there's that old, there's a historic house there that's set way up, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone had a property like that, that property is not going anywhere, but if someone had a property like that, what would they do? They're not going to put their first level commercial space, you know, mm -hmm. 30 feet above grade. Mm -hmm. So they're either going to cut into the grade mm -hmm. and their overall building height would be maxed out somehow. Or it's not that type of development, it's saying maybe just residential, and so then that has other limits. But, you know, relative to the street, we could say you're way too high. We looked at post office and decided that that back corner wasn't a relevant height, right, when you thought about the overall dimension of the project. So we were able to deal with it there. Well, they were also asking for like a 20 foot waiver from the height. They were. So you had some. You know. But we were also looking at it and saying, you know, if you look at the grade and the way it's addressed and the way it actually presents itself, and, and mm -hmm. what do you really perceive when you're on that right. street? That's different. So I'd rather not be so specific here. We have our max height, and then we just need to write some language in here that talks about height from adjacent grade or height. Uh, I don't know how we're going to craft it just yet. You know what I mean? Like it has to be relative to the site. Mm -hmm. But just because you're on a hill doesn't mean you should be penalized that you can't be as tall as the structure that's down the hill. So what? So they march up. So, so my, I guess my, th my question with all these com this pieces of this conversation that we're having where we're like kind of like it just depends on the site and what's next door. And mm -hmm. Are we going to end up having a lot of concept plan reviews with developers before they actually submit official plans? Um, because when they look at our design guidelines, it's everything is kind of up in the air. Not everything. We've got a lot of hard and fast rules in here. But just, this is a look at what that says. I mean, that's you. You proved it up by just saying if you're on a hundred foot hill, you can't put a building on it. I didn't write this. No, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> looking at that specific language and saying it's difficult. Yes, yeah, someone crossed out what I wrote. I'm just saying. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm just saying that that needs work, or it might need to yeah. get back to where it was, frankly. <coughs> but, which was well, I, I, I did cross out the concept about no more than thirty percent greater or lesser than the average height. This was what I what I what, what we were struggling with. We just went with, and you're you know you're right. It is site specific, and you know we put no higher than ten feet. Although I. I I did say, you know, within a hundred foot radius, but maybe it's within a much shorter, you know, budding properties. Yeah, think about the grade change between Woburn Street and the, mm -hmm. the parking lot mm -hmm. behind 30 Haven. Right, so what's the impact of that language to development on, on this side of Woburn Street? Well, the, I'm thinking about the schoolhouse commons, I think it is, the, th the place that got burned up. Schoolhouse condos. Hmm? Schoolhouse condos. But that's a tall building on a tall site. Mm -hmm. Or it looks a great. Elevated site, yeah. But it's it has important. a large radius around it, so you don't have that street perspective from it. At any point, really. That, but that's something that where the we don't want to put anything in that would prohibit favorable development like that. I don't think in this. I agree. However, I don't think in this space that we're talking about do we have is anyone going to have the ability to set back like that building happened to have because of the history of, of what it was and where it came from. Mm -hmm. I, um, I guess I, I feel like the discussion on height is somewhat misguided in that really the discussion is 
been massing adjacent to the adjacent buildings. And, you know, I, I don't care if it's 100 feet high, if it's continually set back from my building and I can't, you know, I, I can't essentially tell that it's 100 feet high. I mean, obviously, when, you know, it's not really going to be 100 feet high, but, um, but I think that's really, I think it's that massing um, uh, it, associated with the adjacent properties that's really the, the, the issue at hand and not how tall a particular building is because if we restrict that, that massing and that, that view angle, then in essence, you do limit the height just from that alone. Right, and the shadows, I guess, would be the What's other. that? The shadows would be like yeah. the other. Yeah, and, and, um, um, and that somewhat does take care of all of those different site conditions um, right. of what's the street, you know, how does the site fit adjacent to the, to, um, in relationship to the street. Um, so I, th I feel like if we get that part of it right, then I, I wouldn't, um, I, I, I'm less concerned about overall height. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and again, right, my, my little thing here is we're, we're um, uh, evaluating what can be done on one, one parcel um, due to what their neighbor um, that's 89 feet away from them happens to, to do, right? I mean, that's, right? They put another story on that house. They buy that house, put another story on, and suddenly they can go. They change that all, and they can go higher. Like that's not really what we're. That's, that's not the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, I, I totally agree yeah. that your your point about massing being very important is is in fact very important. But just you know, in thinking about the locations of the particular downtown Smart Growth district that we're talking about, where it abuts these residential neighborhoods, whether it's Sunoco or whether it's um, uh, Prescott Street, which you know, isn't, isn't uh, 40 R, um, or even whether it's Gould Street. Uh, the notion in each of those abutting residential um, areas other than Prescott Street where there was a pre-existing four or five story storage building um, the imposition of I, I, no matter how you how you mass those things I mean, you can mass them better um, certainly massing in Gould Street was very significant in terms of making it better but the difference to that residential neighborhood between uh, Emark and a four-story building where those residences are within 20 feet of, of that. Um, I mean, to some extent, no, no matter how you mass it, that, there will and, be change. It's an improvement, but it, and an adverse change, an adverse change to the residential neighborhood. I mean, sometimes we can't help it, and I understand that's what's happening. We can't help it, it's gonna happen. But, and I don't know how you address that either, John, in terms of, I mean, your point is right that yeah. massing is important, but all I'm saying is, when you look at each of those individual residential neighborhoods that put it, you throw up, I mean, you know, where Sunoco existed, there wasn't a four, I, I don't even know what's going there, but it was a four or five story building. You can't do five, they'll come in with five. Um, in each of the other areas, you come up with a four story building, um, and that's a, that's a significant adverse impact to each of those residential neighborhoods. Um, you can you can massage it with massing and all the other things, but it still affects it. So maybe it can't be addressed. I don't know, but I'm just advocating for the other side. So I think this 10.4.5. We talked about the parking plan that can kind of be worked into like this, help with this, preserving street side parking. Mm -hmm. um, well, I had written, it got crossed out, but 
additional parking above and beyond requirements in zoning bylaw section 10.5 may be required for projects proposed in tight downtown areas that's a start to the like putting them on notice that parking's yeah. an issue yeah. in this yeah, town right. mm -hmm. we don't go past that Oops. sunset on one that's a crazy one too that needs to be which one so that it can be done 1046 I don't know who stamps and seals shadow studies. Um, certainly, they have to be credible. But I think we had language exactly like that that we changed at town meeting this year. Right. 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 Do we say stamped by an architect? Maybe. I thought that's what, why you guys want the architect to be in charge of that. <laughs> Okay, Where were you? Engineering specialist. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you at town meeting? The architect was the one who had to stamp it. <laughs> we went through a whole conversation on shadows. <laughs> that language is from somewhere else in the zoning? It recently got added. There should be minimum blocking of the sun on public spaces, it's not, sidewalks, and greenways. It's so no that, building that sentence yeah. is not okay. in the zoning. The <laughs> sentence there prior. There no buildings on the south side of any street. <laughs> 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 No, I, I don't know who added this comment, and um, but that first sentence is very similar to a sentence we added this year at town meeting um, when we modified the industrial. We're not a town meeting member. I'm not a town meeting member anymore. But you were on this board when we talked about it for like half a year. <laughs> Okay. No, that's when there was a long discussion about there shall be no shadow on. That's yeah. what happened at town meeting. Yeah. Well, there we had we did no, talk a lot no about shadow. the shadows here, and then we talked a lot about it. Yeah. Okay. It, a long time at town well, meeting. Well, we'll highlight that last <laughs> sentence anyway because it, it needs to be massaged. <laughs> All right. Minimum block. No sign. I see it. You know, our downtown, our, the main street, Haven Street, runs east west pretty much. <laughs> you have to raise everything. <laughs> Delete everything. Farmland. Listen, I'm Just all go back for it. You want to put a big open space on that side <laughs> of the street? That'd be great. But you have to let people hang out on it. You can't just kick them out at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Just had this discussion today with a, a European counterpart who was saying he wanted to sit outside. We went out to lunch, and he's like, "Nobody wants to sit outside. Nobody wants to use these public spaces." It's like, no, because if you had a public space, the police would kick everybody off of it at eight o'clock. If you go to Europe, the kids can hang around in the piazzas and they can stay out there at night. It makes some noise. Here, you want people to use the ice cream shop, but you want them gone by six o'clock. <laughs> So you want some public spaces without sun on them, or with sun on them, but no one's going to use them. <laughs> then you got me <laughs> mad. <laughs> Stupid sun, which is just going to burn out in six billion years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we bombing you down? You're arguing with yourself. <laughs> you're arguing. I, I don't, right, I got right. nothing for Keep you. Keep <laughs> It's getting late anyway, so yep. a few more minutes on this. Should we go with a 10.5 yep, design tra transitions? Yeah. So this is looks like stuff I wrote that nobody even touched. That doesn't mean that it's good, though. Peter, when we get to here, yeah. so we probably <laughs> need to start here at some point, maybe. Oh, these are my if-then statements. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so here your statements are always single or two family. Remember that Jonathan had thrown in the three family piece. So if we're going to consider that or if we're going to wordsmith that piece of it, it, it needs to follow through on all of this. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. Consistency. the utility piece into this transition with the similar if-then statement. I'm just looking at the, the way you've done the then consideration shall be given. Yeah, see I like these. Screening these, and buffering. These work. Yeah. Or you could use this verbiage for the other one. Would we move the whole thing down here or just change the verbiage of where it is? I, I don't know. I can't. Mm -hmm. Should we change more of the things we've talked about to if then students? It makes it easier for a developer to read these and say, yeah. this is my condition. Clear, yeah. Right. 
you know you were saying it was getting nebulous. It also yeah. makes it gives you guys some latitude, like depending on what's proposed. It's because it's not they're not hard and fast rules. So they're kind answering of your question, sorry. The this is design, so the utility should not be in here. Okay. Okay. But this language should be used to address your concern that we've negated any option to put trash anywhere. So. Okay. Because in some of those situations, you can say keep it off of the street because the, the butters aren't residential. vehicular circulation within the site or to the site or both? I think I meant, um, I, s I was looking at that earlier. Where was that? I guess as part of the traffic and parking enhanced study that we want, this, this should certainly be part Are you talking about under 2A? Yeah. 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 Um, Could even have a checklist if you want to. Parking, yeah. Residential parking, commercial parking, fire, safety, mm -hmm. deliveries. And Tony, to answer your comment, we do look at this under site plan review. My question was whether this specific information about vehicular circulation should be somewhere else in these guidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if it's in site plan, I would assume it'd be covered under that. And the guidelines should say what we want them to do, but I defer. No, I just wanted to understand what you were asking, I guess. Well, I, my thought process was that if you were going to make them do a circulation uh, plan, you know, which I didn't know if it was in guidelines, uh, in site plan review or not. It sounded like something that every project should have to do. It's not just the downtown smart growth. Right, right. But if we can just put in the design guidelines for now and then change the um, site plan, we can do that too. I mean, we do look at it for basically all projects. Right. Yeah. Um, I just, since we've been talking about when we get these 40 Rs, future 40 Rs will need to account for the cumulative impacts of other projects that have happened in the area. I thought we would put some language like to alert developers to that, that like they need to really think about these things, not just have okay. them be afterthoughts. Yeah. Mm. Um, Can I? Make a nice little circle to the beginning of our discussion. Looking at the light abatement number six, we talk about when the abutting residential property, when abutting, then the no light shall extend past property lines and, and you have the, the timing restrictions. What if we also pay some attention to the primary commercial streets where you say, in some ways, you know, a primary commercial street can have a light through 11 o'clock to, you know, if that's what they're using, if their use is active at that point. And it, are there other places where you can flip it and be clear that certain uses are almost, you know, let's keep them to the primary commercial zones where they're allowable while we're being careful with the abutting to re residential zones. It's almost like giving a little bit of the contrast and also providing mm -hmm. some permission statements right. as opposed to all restriction statements. <laughs> I know that's not what this section is meant to be. No, but yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, so I 
I like that wording things a little more positively. Just but also I think working towards the you know enlivened street goal. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking, you know, Austin. I'm right. <laughs> people walking from their car one place far away to another place and stopping in a shop in between. That sounds, that sounds idyllic. Mm -hmm. No pink structures. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that. <laughs> hey, it's like it's like they knew that this was coming. Wait, are they listening? <laughs> they must be listening. Right, and and that's really more of a harmonious comment. Yeah, you know, in terms of let's be respectful of the character of the town. And I didn't know how else to word it, but I, th I think if we had had in place some sort of an encouragement not to use pink. <laughs> then then we would have had a different result and in fact they are making a change do we know what they've so decided they're, they're, on they were going with that blue they proposed i did ask them to look it's at a lighter really dark. I, I said a few of you mentioned that it was dark and asked them to look at a lighter mm -hmm. color yep. um but they're going to go with the original it's going to look black but it also isn't a, um there's a lot of brown that they're is it yes, all the pink? With yeah, all, all the pink is not going to turn to 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 that dark blue. Right. Right. Yeah. They, they, they accent it to the mock-up. It. I think the it pink is. is blue, and everything else is. Because that's not, it's not what. what you that's not what you showed. Oh, because the mock-up they'd only painted part of it. But then did no, you look there at that was a, no, no, there was a rendering. Yeah, the yeah. rendering. The rendering so had a lot saying? more tan. Yeah, yeah. It's tan. Where where there's currently and pink. currently it's pink. Okay, I yes. see what you're saying. Okay, I thought you so were I saying. I think you were saying that the pink would bleed through. No, no, no. Okay. No, we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So what are we saying? They're just going to paint it all blue? No. No. It's some of the some of what's yeah pink now is going to be tan. I and understand. Some that's, that's, what I, that's what I. Yeah, I, yeah. Was I, I thought we were you changing. were saying that the blue would be tempered by the fact that it has pink underneath oh, no. it, and that's not the case. No, right. they've got it framed pretty nicely. It's got some nice accents. Yeah, but it's going to be dark. But just to be clear, it's right? We we mm -hmm. building's all glass. What? There's a lot of glass on that building. Yeah, a lot of sites into the unit. Yeah, right. it's, it's very yeah. active. I don't think it'll be oppressive. The backside might be a little different, but that's going to get uh, is more yeah. open space for the front of it. Right, what's, what's the question? Know, what are we talking about? Oh. This is Haven's 30 Street. Haven's 30 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 Haven's What's the question, John? Oh, no, the st it's not a question. The statement is more about, um, it is more, uh, um, which we have now, um, more controls on um, the difference between a design and uh, um, uh, as constructed. Um, there was no intention that that building was going to be the color that it was built. We did not approve the the, the, right, the color right. that it came Something out. Something I think I yeah. Up so a so long time ago. so even in this design oh, guideline, even, not, you know, we we they would have they would have met the design guidelines, right? Until it was built. Except right. Except that they did what they had on the plan did not match what the right, reality right. was. And the, the hope is, is that they will follow through on a plan that we say, oh, that's lovely, and we don't want it to be neon green. And right. comes out neon green, I would hope somebody would hold. No, it's, it's not that we're going to make them repaint the building if it comes out wrong. It's that before they paint it, they're going to come to staff with samples of the color on the material. I think that's a preference. Which, right. Which, right. Which, right. Is, what which is what we started. Which is yes. 30 Haven. Right. That guy, that painter, actually just happened to stop by. And we were like, thank you for coming in. Like yeah. we do, he's like, he's like, I know you probably don't care. And we, we were like, care. like, I don't even know why he came in the office. Just for that. It thing. just has so happened that we got this opportunity to, to weigh in on it. Cause he was, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, 
Mm -hmm. Worked yeah. out because he didn't yeah. think we had a review process or anything. He was just stopping by town hall. <laughs> Casually mentioned it. <laughs> we were like, wait, what did you just say? The no pink buildings language. The no pink yeah. buildings language can be worked into it. Properly worded. Yeah, we can. Yeah. There's something yeah. about New yeah. England characters yeah. Yeah. earlier. Yeah, there is a character yeah. or a personality yeah. for the town. Yeah. We need to be cognizant of that. I don't think pink has ever been historic, except maybe Art Deco. It, it actually <laughs> is, yet. but for internal yeah. colors, yeah. Yes. right? Yes. It's you know, it's along with federal blue. There is that salmon color, but that's internal. It's never. Now, I used to live up Upper Peninsula, Michigan, and these guidelines would not work because they have so much snow they paint their houses neon yellow and neon green so, so they can find, find them <laughs> <laughs> so when the man leaves the tavern and wanders down the street he goes into the right <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, what else? All right. All right. Uh, that is pretty much it. Okay. Uh, we got down into some of pretty good. more Pam's comments about the materials, signage, and yeah, color. Right, and that's the, just suggestions. The address, yeah, throughout. Okay. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll take all these comments and I'll try to gel them into something that we can then review again. Does that sound good? Good. Mm -hmm. Try to like incorporate the them into this. Um, I think there were some terminologies you need to Yeah, include, and there's right. still there's still a lot of outstanding questions about like do we want to say one, two, and three, or right. do we want how, and how many the, all the things we talked about I can look into um, and we can look at the map and see what the residential neighborhood implication is um, if it's two homes or three um, okay. This is good Okay. Closing arguments? <laughs> I work straight for itself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, if only that were always the case with you, John. <laughs> it's never the case. I mean, I say it's never the case. Do you have any sense about um, when that would be? Uh, when you're going to be doing that? Or, or can you just email me to. to I'll email yeah. you, yeah. I'll probably try to work on this. Like, right. it's fresh on my mind now. So. October 1st is a booked meeting. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, well, we'll we'll try to get something for October 1st just in case our applications don't have yeah, it. Yeah. 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 I had a question about the master plan, Andrew, and yes. I wasn't sure you were able to find the original document so we can actually edit it. No. I I would caution against that because master planning is a process. Right. And no, I understand yeah. that. But if even if it were a PDF where we could do a highlight and do a comment, <clears throat> much the same way we've done this one, it would make it easier. Because right now, if you click on a word to put a comment in, it takes the whole page. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a different PDF creation system okay. rather than from uh, MS. So if you had the original MS Word mm -hmm. and you saved it out as a PDF, we could go down word by word, line by line. Mm -hmm. But however this was created, it was created by scanning it in and creating a PDF, mm -hmm. which is not editable. We can look for the more commentable. So that's why I'm saying if mm. it would make life a little easier rather than you're having to match up 7.2.3 to our comment on a sheet of paper. Okay. Just saying. Yeah. yeah we can see if we can find look. the original. That would help the um, word version of it. Oh. Okay. Planning updates. Hmm. October 17th meeting. Burger King has their occupancy. So oh, many questions. Really? I get so many questions. What's yeah. going on with it, Rachel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Did they do a soft opening or something? I thought I saw people eating food. I, I don't know. No, they don't have food yet. I don't think. Okay. Just an employee yeah. training or something. I mean, okay. think the employees went over to McDonald's and <laughs> <in> the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. That um, good. Trying to think of what else. And, and you know, on, uh, I right. thank on you. Sunoco or, or um, the only post office. Update, post office, okay. we're waiting for them to apply for a building permit. Um, We've done their, uh, we've done the third party code reviews and all the issues have been cleared up. Um, but we don't have a building permit application yet, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, Sunoco, I believe they've actually switched engineers, um, and I've been, I've heard through the engineering division grapevine that they're going to come, they might need to come back for new plans. 
potentially. Um, some issues with utilities and um, well, I, I have no one spoken to me directly, and I have not seen a plan. Um, but so that's just what I've what I've been told. Gold um, Street, nothing yet. Uh, no, I've been told they also switched engineers. <laughs> so do they need the engineers before they can demo? They, they usually. Um, they do need a le higher level of detail plan before they can demo, um, and they need m much better, more detailed plans before they can. Because they've staked off the property on the um, back. I, Gold Street. Okay. I mean, Gold I do not. I, do, I the long and the short answer is I do not have an update on Gold Street. Um, okay. We haven't heard anything. So I've got to start at once. <laughs> mm. um, well, I mean, they they haven't applied for a building permit, and we so. Well, the, what Chapin Street is. Chapin Street is underway. Yeah. They have their building. They have. Building just a demo permit. Think demo. Without a hundred percent. Yeah. In terms of Lincoln Street, I read um, an article that. The rat problem is an urban myth to be um, related to construction. That it actually is much more about season than weather and mm -hmm. things like that. So, as much as we all are very concerned about it, it may not be related to construction. They like people. They like food. It they seems like it, shelter. It, it seems like it was. It's like the weather and the, the timing of the frosts and the not frosts over the spring and the, um, mm -hmm. winter just created optimal reproduction. <laughs> like all the bunnies that I'm sure yeah, are in are everyone's, everyone's backyards as well. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Board of Health is having a meeting tomorrow night at uh, 7 o'clock, I think, at Parker. Um, and the main topic on the agenda is the burden situation around. <laughs> oh, good to know. Should adopt some feral cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I did notice for the first time ever today a hawk circling over Reading where I've never seen one before. Really? It's like oh, two or three really? Years back back oh, really? Yeah. Was... But right over the Lincoln Street property. So I'm uh, just saying. That's okay, too. I've never seen. Oh, right. I've released yeah. the hawks. I don't think <laughs> the birds in my yard eat enough, frankly. There's a lot more animals they should be eating. <laughs> right. In past years, I've always seen hawks flying over my house, and this year, not a one. So. They're all over Lincoln Street. Yeah, we got There's a lot of rabbits. And yeah. Other things. Yeah, well, we've, we've got, you know, rabbits and mice and the... Uh, my, even though my cat is like 12 years old, he still comes in with the occasional <laughs> animal. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Abstain? I don't get the vote. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I do that on purpose. <clears throat> we got it.